What's going on, Jerome's new weekly segment catching up on the NFC North week three update. Here is how they currently stand. The Vikings are for some reason in third place at 0 and 2. But you look at the point differential, by the way, minus four. Only the Vikings can have two losses, and the total point differential in both games is four points, but I digress. The Packers are allegedly at the top of the heap. The Bears are second, and then you have the the low-energy Detroit Lions down at the bottom. So uh, the Packers, uh, I I love how the narratives change. So the Packers got absolutely taken to the woodshed by the Saints week one, even though they got a road game at a neutral site. Now, only the Packers can get out of playing at the Superdome due to uh, uh, due to weather, and then they end up playing in Jacksonville. They still get their ass beat. But oh, uh, I love how all ESPN is all up on. Oh, Aaron Rodgers is back. The Packers are back because they beat Detroit at home in prime time. Congrats, you effing lations. Get out of here. I was like, oh, Aaron Rodgers threw four touchdowns. That's really easy swinging it to uh, Aaron Jones. Yeah, the most talented Aaron on that offense. Kirk Cousins is the most talented quarterback in the NFC North right now. And that's not a lie. That is zero cap. None at all. But, okay. Everyone's back uh, on the Packers. Jack, sure. Bears uh, are also one and one. Uh, they just got a win at home, outlasting Cincinnati 2017, the Andy Dalton Bowl. Dalton got hurt. Uh, apparently did something to his MCL. Justin Fields came in, and you got to play the kid. You, you do. I, I think that the ceiling for Andy Dalton is capped, and if you're a Bears fan, like obviously you should be clamoring for Justin Fields to start. Looks like he's going to play for an extended period of time now. But also, be careful what you wish for, man, because Justin Fields behind that offensive line, it's no bueno. It's not good. And, and you saw that he's a different uh, quarterback when he has protection and when he does not. So, this is going to be his welcome to the NFL moment. He will certainly have some big-time plays. He's a talented kid, but, yeah, I think this is going to be a rough season for the Bears all the way around. And the only reason that Matt Nagy, fake-ass Brad Childers, hasn't been fired is, one, because the Bears are cheap, and, number two, uh, their GM is tethered to him anyway. So if he throws them overboard, he's going to be falling right behind. Yeah, that's whatever there. And then the Vikings at 0-2. The best 0-2 team in National Football League history where the Vikings are 0-2, but they're 2-0 against the Vikings because they threw it away against Cincinnati. Uh, All the penalties in the first half, really sloppy, undisciplined football. They got back into it and then just heartbreak in overtime, even though Dalvin was certainly down. Certainly down. Greg Joseph, the hero of that game, by the way, because he drilled that 53-yarder at the end of regulation, send it to overtime. And then week two against Arizona, I mean, Arizona was eminently beatable, man. Even though most of the Vikings fan base is like, oh, did you see what Arizona did to Tennessee? Blah, blah, blah. No, no. But the Vikings just gave away at the end, man. A uh, couple of game management decisions by Zimmer at the end of both, ha- both halves were atrocious, as well as uh, Greg Joseph, I mean, you do have to make that kick, bro. Uh, it's not automatic. 37 is not automatic, but you got to make that kick, especially after you drill 252 yarders. But Dalvin Cook has been the best running back in the league, minus Derrick Henry just going off in the second half in overtime against Seattle. But, hey, no big deal. Uh, Vikings get to play that stupid Seattle run defense this week at home, by the way. No problem. Uh, and Kirk Cousins, like, like I've said, has been playing over his skis. Like, he's been absolutely bonkers. The offensive line really got together. They really uh, stuck it to Chandler Jones. I think they played great. Rashad Hill really stepped it up. And I think this Vikings team has a chance. Where It's so weird. The offense is good to go. And now Mike Zimmer's defense is ass. Thank you again. It's great, but uh, looking forward to the next three weeks for all three opponents. So the Packers are at San Francisco. That's going to be a tough-ass game. Uh, Pittsburgh at home. Steelers, I don't know what to make of the Steelers, man. I I just really don't. They they went up to Buffalo. They won week one. You don't really know what team you're going to get. Big Ben is washed. Najee Harris can't really get anything going because that offensive line is ass. They're terrible. And then you're at Cincinnati, which showed week one. I mean, Bengals fans are fired up. Uh, They just barely lost week two against Chicago. That was a really winnable game for Joe Burrow and company. But uh, we'll see. Chicago, uh, they're at Cleveland. Kevin Stefanski and company, uh, best offensive line in the game. Nick Chubb is really getting after him. Miles Garrett, that defense, of course, is going to be tough. So, I mean, if Justin Fields, his first start is on the road in Cleveland, I, I know he's an Ohio State guy, except they're going to boo the crap out of him. It's going to be great. Then you got Detroit at Soldier Field, and then you're at Vegas. Raiders, 2-0. I can't explain it, man. I can't. I, I can't, but they are fun to watch. Plus, you know, a lot of people thought that the home crowd advantage wasn't going to be there for the Raiders. That is a nice-ass stadium, man. Like, 
it, it is top notch. Like it, it combines the best of the Raiders lore as well as the glitz and glamour of Las Vegas. It's great. Uh, Vikings, you got Seattle at home. I, I understand Seattle. Oh, we never beat the Seahawks and Russell Wilson. It's at home. Seattle just got got at their place by Tennessee, and you can run on them. And yeah, it's going to be tough covering DK and Tyler Lockett with this secondary, but Daniil Hunter's after that ass. He's after that ass, man. Yeah, that's right. Uh, week four, you got Cleveland coming in. And Cleveland, good defense and a running game. That certainly travels, but it's going to be loud and proud. Three straight home games uh, at the U.S. Bank Stadium for the Vikings. Then you got Detroit week five. Lions, it's going to be tough, man. So you got Baltimore at home, Lamar Jackson and company just really getting after it. You're at Chicago, and then you're at Minnesota. So, I mean, the Lions could easily be 0-5. Like, I understand that the Vikings fans are – Pissing them out. It's like, oh, 0 oh 4, here we come now. Like, the Vikings are going to take care of business against Seattle. I'm willing to put it on the table. Like, it would be one thing if this team just did not show up. Like, if this team extrapolated the first half against Cincinnati over the first two games, then yes, I would say 0 oh 4, let's tank, all that stuff, blah, blah, blah. But we ain't there yet. I mean, this team is extremely talented. They got a lot of fight, and they're bitter, man. And never underestimate bitterness motivating people. Because they'll get after it. They'll beat Seattle's ass. They'll beat Cleveland's ass. And Detroit, this ain't Detroit, man. This is a Super Bowl. Uh, That's right. Uh, But that's a look at the NFC North standings as of right meow. Uh, What are your thoughts on our thoughts? Let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Once more, that work, pull a little something in the Venmo. But until next time, Skull Production Value.